Las Vegas Raiders at the Los Angeles Chargers, a game that is incredibly interesting from many perspectives. One, being that the Chargers might be the most hyped team in the offseason of the NFL, in the history of the NFL. I mean, seriously, has there been a team that has been more hyped than this Los Angeles Chargers team? I mean, it has been crazy. And listen, I'm going to tell you guys, I kind of buy into it. I mean, like, this is one of those deals where typically I would be all about trying to pick apart, you know, every single reason that everyone is jumping up and down about this team. And instead, all I do is look and say, wow, I actually really do like like what they did right there. And I really like what they did right there. And, and it keeps going on and on. And I find myself really kind of liking this team. And so maybe... There's a reason not to, and you guys can kind of talk me off of it. As we sit right now, they are three to three and a half point favorites over the Raiders. There are some heavily juiced threes out there, actually just one heavily juiced three out there, and then there's mainly three and a halves right now. 52, 52 and a half is your total. Adam, let me start with you here. Of course, this Raiders team made a ton of offseason news with their acquisition of Devontae Adams, but that wasn't all that they did. I mean, they did make some other moves, which I think were just maybe because of what everybody else was doing, maybe got a little bit, you know, maybe went a little bit under the radar. But, I mean, look, you, you get Devontae Adams, but you sign Hunter Renfro, you have him there. Then you get Chandler Jones, you bring him in. You bring in Bilal Nichols. I mean, like, these are real signings, right? I mean, these are real guys that can help out. And so I, I get it. We're jumping up and down about what we got from the Chargers, which – J.C. Jackson, Sebastian Joseph Day, Khalil Mack. I mean, there's a whole bunch to absolutely love about what, what they did. Austin Johnson, I should also say. I mean, so th they made some noise as well. Where do you rank kind of the off seasons for both of these teams? The Chargers had an off season, Matt, that reminds me a lot of Cincinnati, where you look at a team that was already good, building around a young quarterback, taking advantage of the fact that you are not paying that young quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers level money and went out and made some moves that fit exactly what they needed. Neither team looked at their roster and said, we're good, we're ascending and we're good enough. Uh, the Chargers go out and they upgrade on the offensive line by drafting Zion Johnson. They get Khalil Mack, they get J.C. Jackson, who will not play this week. And I think that's important to, yes. to note uh, is that J.C. Jackson will not be on the field to help out against Devontae Adams. Now, on the other side of this, if you don't look at future cost, if you just say, did the Raiders make themselves a better team this year? Yes, mm -hmm. then getting Devontae Adams clearly makes them a better team this year. They already, at this point, have the second most dead cap money of any team going into 2023. So they went all in on this season in a division that does not suggest they should be going all in. Now, you're right. I like the Chandler Jones acquisition. I'm basically going to call Chandler Jones essentially a better version of Yannick Ngakwe at this point, right? Mm -hmm. You get more pass rush. You get no defense against the run. And paired up with Max Crosby, that gives them two formidable edges. Now, the key problems you have to look at with the Raiders are on the offensive line, which right. is trending toward being one of the worst offensive lines in the league. And then in the secondary, it's just questions, right? It's absolute questions in the secondary. Can Nate Hobbs be as good as he was as a rookie? Do you get the good Rock Yassin or do you get the Rock Yassin that led the Indianapolis Colts to trade him? Now, why am I leaning, and I'm not going to say heavily on, but leaning mm. toward the Raiders in this spot at three and a half? Same as New England. Not at three, but at three and mm. a half. Uh, I believe that the Devontae Adams connection is one that they are going to force feed this week with Derek Carr to get that off to a good start. And I think he could have an absolutely enormous week. Uh, I do believe that Justin Herbert under pressure is going to be more like the quarterback he was in 2021 than the quarterback he was in 2020. That being said, I don't feel super confident about this one. I will take the three in the hook with uh, Vegas. That's my lean on this one, largely because, as you mentioned, the Chargers are crazy hyped. And again, I might be fading a little bit of that going into this week. So we're, uh, yeah, we're on opposite sides here, though. That said, you know, we could, one could win, one could push, whatever. It's, I, I did take the Chargers as three point favorites here, and mainly because of what you mentioned. The big question mark about this team is the offensive line. I'm talking about the Raiders, is the offensive line, which I do think is going to be 
really, really rough, at least to start the season. Maybe they can figure some stuff out, some different blocking schemes and stuff along the way. But I think it's going to be pretty tough sledding, especially when you look at week one where it's Khalil Mack, Joey Bosa, Jerry Tillery, Sebastian Joseph Day, Morgan Fox, Austin Johnson, all coming to town to try and make your life a living hell. And so for me, I'm kind of betting on those guys having at least a little bit better day than this than this offensive line, which again, I think is trending towards being pretty, pretty bad, at least at the beginning of the year. Maybe they can get something done there. I mean, I just, I do look at this and I think the total, I think is appropriate. I think both these teams are going to score. I don't think that this is like, oh, the Chargers go in and house the Raiders or anything like that. I, I'm not, that is not what I'm saying. I just do believe at the end of the shootout, when it's all said and done, that they get the better of it. Steven, what do you what do you look at when you kind of see this Raiders and Chargers matchup here in week one that, again, can actually weirdly in a week one game go a long way in not only shaping our view of these two teams, but maybe even when it's all said and done, as wacky as this division could turn out to be, actually play a role in, in how things turn out. Should be entertaining as hell, but a game that I think has high variance, which led me to not pick a side and, and bet here. I, I agree if I was going to, then the three and a half would be me on the Raiders and the three would be me on the Chargers. That's mm -hmm. I think that's a fair point by both of you. Um, yeah, I mean, to your point, the, the Raiders offensive line was second to last in run block win rate, 21st in pass block win rate. And the Chargers have added Khalil Mack to go with Joey Bosa. So that's that's not going to get any easier in this matchup. On the flip side, the fact that the Raiders can pressure without blitzing has really made Justin Herbert work. They have blitzed at the lowest mm -hmm. rate in the league, which gives them more help in the secondary to combat Herbert in the passing game. And look no further than the amazingly historic, entertaining, almost a tie in both teams make the playoffs <laughs> last year in the final week of the season. You know, in that game, let's not forget the Chargers trailed by 15 points with eight minutes left in the game. And it took Herbert converting three third or fourth downs to get it within a one score game, including a fourth and 21 for a 23 yard touchdown. And then the following drive, he picks up a fourth <laughs> and 10, another fourth and 10 via penalty and a third fourth and 10 on that touchdown drive. And then the final drive to get the kick, the field goal to send it to OT. He picked up a fourth and nine on that drive. So a lot had to go right for the chargers to get to stay in that game. And, in those two games against Las Vegas overall, Herbert only averaged 6 and 5.8 yards per attempt for a quarterback that averaged 7.5 for the season. So I just think these two teams match up very well against each other. I think they have enough to kind of slow down the strengths of the other team, which makes it for a really entertaining football game, but not necessarily one I want to bet. No, I, I think that's I think that's absolutely fair. I, um, you know, at the end of the firefight, I'll... I'm going to go ahead and go with the Chargers, but I can totally understand sitting this one out, just enjoying what I think could be the best game of the week for sure uh, when it's all said and done. I mean, I, these two teams, I think they both have enough talent to make the playoffs if it does come down to that. And, um, you know, we just got to get a little bit of blocking on the Raiders side of things.